everyone and welcome back to the workbench for another uh, episode of Steve Pretends to Know What He's Doing. Today we're weathering a uh, pair of Atherin covered hoppers here. These are former Chessy cars I picked up pretty cheap and uh, decided to weather and redo into CSX. As you can see we got a rail brown out. We're already airbrushing. And uh, we're going to do two different cars here. So there's going to be two. You're going to get to see everything twice essentially. For this first one I'm going a little heavy on the rust here towards the top you'll see uh, why when I show you the prototype here photo here shortly but uh, this car I'm going kind of heavy on the top I also hit the trucks and everything while I'm at it and just kind of hit everything pretty good I want this this car here this is the other car this one um, going with a little bit of a lighter style deal on this one so I'm just kind of faintly hitting the trucks and hitting a little bit towards the top of the car and a little bit on the ends of the car not too much not nearly as much as I did on that first one so now I'm going to do something I forgot to do to start with here I've got a little bit of white paint and I'm putting it over our Chessy Cat logo because I want it to kind of look like it's faded out and washed out this is just regular white acrylic paint put a little bit on and then I'm taking and wiping it off the q-tip to kind of just get that faded look to it um, no real exact science to this guy you just kind of put it on there wipe it off and it's gonna look decent it might look a little like it eh, but it'll kind of it'll look better in the long run so you just kind of get it on there get some decent coverage on there and let it roll now we're gonna fade our cars here um, I do this after I do the rust brown because I kind of want to tone that back a little bit at the same time. So this car here, we're going to go pretty heavy on our fade coat, like really heavy because the prototype photo I have, um, the car that I'm doing is pretty dang faded. It is it's very pale or yellow compared to our other car that's going to be a bit of a rust bucket. So now here's our rust bucket car and we're going to throw a little bit of white on there. We're not going to give it too much though. Um, just kind of just kind of hit it a little bit I don't want to get too heavy with it not like the other one um, so while well, I'm got a second here I decided to do these two cars at the same time just to show how using the same techniques you could get a different result and as you can see we're already starting to look a little bit different here here's our prototype photo of our first car now it's not gonna look exactly like this when it's done really because this photo is from like 2004 ish it was the but I just really liked how the patch out was on it. So I'm kind of toning it back a little bit, but it's still going to be pretty gnarly looking when we're done. I want it to have that like 90s era appearance. Got our Sharpie permanent marker here, a little bit of brown going on. And uh, we're going to go ahead and start doing some uh, work with our marker here. We're just going to kind of look at our photo and reference some different spots that you can see rust kind of at. And I'm just literally drawing it on there, kind of hitting that edge there. You get a lot of rust along the edges there as well as along those little um, spots where the, uh, oh gosh, where the hell you call them, the supports for the roof walk there kind of sit, as well as you get that seam down the middle of the car tends to get a little bit. So I'm just kind of going off the photo and just putting the little dots here and there. Um, not really getting too carried away as far as trying to match the photo exactly, because our car numbers are going to be a little bit different than the ones in the photo, I think. I can't really remember, to be honest with you. Um, but we're just kind of, you know, putting some dots in here, just trying to be random about it. You don't want it to look like you're doing it exact, you know, exact little spots. Or you want to be random with them. That's part of what makes good weathering because in the real world, things all are a little bit different. So now we have our other car. And we're just going to kind of do the same process. And as you can see here, this car has got a little bit of a lighter thing going on. That's why I went with a little bit heavier of a fade coat. Um, this one's got some more like streaking kind of deal going down too. Now this photo was from the early 90s, so we're, things go a little bit heavier. That's just kind of the way she goes, you know. We're going to go ahead and we're going to do our entire seam down the middle here because this car doesn't have a patch over it. And then we're going to go ahead and hit all of our uh, little supports up there at the top, kind of make some streaks off of them. Uh, I'm not getting too carried away with our streaks because we're going to be adding to those later on this is just kind of a the back to the layer thing i always preach uh you, you always want to build in layers and we'll just do a little bit here a little bit there to kind of build up again all i'm doing really is just kind of referencing my photo and trying to draw what i see as close as i can so let me get some more more streakage lots of streakage going on here little scrape marks you know just whatever whatever feels right A 
bit along the bottom too. All right, so now, oh, we got my favorite, the acrylic rust texture paint from Vallejo. Love this stuff. Really, really love using this stuff. So now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put some of this along the top edge of our car here. As you can see, this car had a lot of rust up along the top there, so we're gonna get pretty heavy with it here. Um, just kind of pretty much painting it on, so to speak. The beauty of this texture stuff is um, when you put it on, it, you don't have to be even with it. You can just kind of really kind of get heavy in some spots, light and it all dries to have like a different effect to it. As you can see, I got a little, little carried away. I'm just gonna wipe that off, you know, kind of, but what I'm doing is when I get that overage like that there and I start wiping it off with the Q-tip, they'll kind of blend it into the next part there. We're putting a good coat on our roof here too. You always wanna have a good rusty roof when you're doing a car that has that top edge kind of rusted. Um, these cars tended to get a lot of rust on the top of them just because of how much uh, activity there is up there on that roof and spillage and all that fun jazz. Just kind of putting in some of those little rust spots I made, just kind of putting a little bit on there with that. And you could always come back and wipe it off with the Q-tip to kind of, you know, tone it down some. Kind of hitting that edge pretty good there. Now on our other car, we're going to be a little bit more... Um, selective with where we're putting it at we're not going to paint up everything because again this car doesn't have as much so see me kind of wiping and putting down little spots and then wiping them off and again just you know put it on wipe it off and put it on wipe it off that's just kind of the trick of weathering you know you could always um, wipe off a little bit if you, you get a little crazy you could always add a little bit more if you need to now this is going to be the fun part here we're getting out to our uh the, the oil paints here um i don't remember what the heck the brand's called on these um what dark rust paint from ab bit i can't even say that it's dark rust oil paint get it get a dark rusty color that that's gonna be what you want to use for doing this going to put a little bit down there and we also have some light rust just for flavor because you always want a little bit of flavor with this stuff. I don't use oil paints a whole heck of a lot but I do use them in certain things and with how the streaking is on these cars I really really like to use them as well as some uh, enamel thinner. That's what you want to use through oil paints so I'm going ahead and I'm dotting all those spots up there along the top with a little bit of oil paint. Take my q-tip wipe it down and we get a little thinner as you can see here just to really kind of work it out a little bit more now the cool thing with oil paint is when you take it with that enamel thinner it really turns it into a, like a streak kind of thing and um, you just got to play with it a little bit you know you, you put a little bit on there you try wiping it with some thinner and seeing how that goes sometimes you might have to use more thinner sometimes you use less as you can see right now I'm using a brush also to kind of help with my streaking you know put a little bit on use the brush it's really just a by feel thing um, obviously you just you, you want to be kind of careful with the oil paints because they're very thick and um, when you're doing something like this you want to put just a little bit because a little bit goes a long way and um, kind of wipe it and work it wipe it and work it you know just a little bit of time So I get those really, really fine streaks. You really have to kind of just keep wiping and putting more on and wiping and putting more on and just kind of keeping that process going over and over again to get the really fine streaking kind of deal. Um, you could also kind of use a brush to do it, but the problem I've run into with brushes is you tend to end up with a lot more uh, streakage than you want. So you got to be kind of careful with using the brushes. And here we go over on this car. Now this one's going to be pretty gnarly looking. Uh, we're going to go pretty heavy here with our um, oil paint. It's not going to look like it here at first, but it's it's going to get pretty pretty wild here. And you guys are going to get to see a little bit of the whole why I'm talking about putting some on, using some thinner and wiping it off and doing all that because it, it's going to look pretty terrible here in a minute. Yeah, that, that looks god-awful. And we're going to wipe some of that off. Of course, they're thinner. 
but it, as you can tell it really kind of darkened our car up and gave us more of that rusty color so even though it, it looked horrible and it wasn't quite what i was going for it still looks pretty good now now what i'm going to do is i'm coming through and i'm starting off with that um, oil paint right along that top edge and i'm wiping it down with the q-tips and some thinner and just kind of working that in and coming back and wiping some off and working some in and the, the more important thing I'm going to tell you here is when you're doing something like this with the streaking and the oil paint, you always want to wipe up and down. Do not wipe side to side unless you're trying to clean something off. Um, the streaks are always going to be up and down from top to bottom. So that's kind of the important part when working this. You see I got some thinner in there because I thought it was a little too heavy. And I got a dry Q-tip. I'm wiping some of that off. And I'm gonna come in and add a little bit more. Cause it, it's a very like fine balance with oil paints and trying to get them to be right. Um, trying to get that right amount, so to speak, and, and get everything how you want it. Um, sometimes you gotta kinda streak it down and then wipe off the edges a little bit to get the finer streaking. But you just gotta keep messing with it and keep going at it until you get it about how you want it. it it's very, um, finicky to do. I think I want to say it took me about half an hour by itself just to do this side of this car because I kept putting some on and wiping some off and just kept messing with it so don't be afraid to take your time with that. All right next is our very important part here we're going to do our uh, patches on the side we got that true color paint going on here. Got a little that CSX covered hopper beige which I didn't know they made. I found that uh, when I was shopping in one of the online stores and of course I had to order some. Very handy for doing these patches and for doing any CSX covered hoppers you might want to do. Sprays pretty nicely. But uh, as you can tell, I got the sides of the car taped off. And we're just going to paint our patches here. This is really kind of where you can start to see the, the difference between the two cars and why I chose them specifically. Um, because of just how the patches are so different between them. That car had a very large patch that was covering up all the chassis stuff. This one just was a basic CSX patch. And then I added the um, one over the um, lube plates as well. I decided to do that in the hopper beige as well. I think the prototype car had black, but pretty sure I went with a different number. And here we can see our, uh, got our Micron archival ink pens. I don't remember what the kind of pen they are. These are pretty cool. I already got the car decal. Now this is a pretty cool technique here. You take these pens and you make your little dots there. And you come back through and you, you streak it down with a brush. Picked up this technique from uh, Mr. Dan Arnold. So I'm sure more in the, I'm sure quite a few of you are familiar with him on YouTube. He does some really, really awesome weathering stuff. Um, really, really excellent model. I've learned quite a bit from watching his videos. I wish I had the patience he has to do some of the really fine stuff he does, but I just don't have that patience, guys, so I try to take what he does and simplify it for my own use, and, you know, it kind of helps, and really, the thing with weathering is I could do something one way, and you could try it and not like it, and you could do it your way, and I might try it and not like it, so you kind of got to blend techniques together. As you can see, we're doing the same uh, dot deal here on this car as well, just kind of doing the streak down. I learned about this after I already did the brown sharpie marker at the beginning of the video, so that's kind of why that's there's the two techniques in here. Uh, really, I'm, I'm just going to be using these archive pens. These are awesome. Probably cut the sharpie out all together, but then again, maybe I'll use it a little bit here and there. But uh, after this is done, go ahead and clear coat it. And then we're going to come over here. We got some, uh, this time we've got white. Uh, oil paint the white oil paints what we're using here got a little thinner now what i'm doing here is i keep a bottle of this mixed up it's um the oil paint and thinner mixed together and as you can see we got a little little hefty with the uh, oil paint there i'm gonna come in i'm gonna brush that with that thinner and then i'm gonna come back and wipe it off so this is gonna be like a really good uh, example here what i was talking about about putting a little paint on wiping some off and kind of messing with it and this again you just kind of be kind of random with it but you can really see how you how that oil paint really streaks nicely and how you can wipe it off with the q-tip to get the streaking that you want and 
it's something to me that's kind of important to have on these cars is to have that streaking drippage down from the top where the car was overfilled and they just kept on rolling with it and just kept on putting more in there till it overflowed everywhere. So again, just put some on, wipe some off, and that's going to give you what you're looking for right there, um, that oil paint. So we got that on there. A little bit there on the top too, never have too much. At least on the top anyhow. And we're going to do the same shadeel on this car as well. This one I kind of went with a big heavy spot there on the end where it really got, really got hit with it. But again, just take some thinner and just wipe and dry and wipe and dry. Um, normally I'll use like one end of the Q-tip for the thinner and then the other end for the drying off. So that way I just kind of flip it back and forth. But when you're doing this, you kind of want to use a fresh Q-tip as needed too because you're, you're going to be drying off a lot more than you're wetting down. So gotta put some on and wipe some off. And we get a really, really gnarly streaking down the sides. I, I absolutely love that on these cars, that streaking. I, I don't know why, but I think it's cool. And uh, using that oil paint, it's a real easy deal to do. I've never had much luck trying to do it with like acrylic paints or anything, but the oil paint always works well. So here for our last little trick we got here, we got some tacky glue that is of course watered down some. And what I'm gonna do here, I got some baking soda as well. And what, are you, what are you doing with baking, Steve? We're making cookies? No, no, we're gonna make some uh, dried up cement here on the top of our car. We got our tacky glue that's mixed up and put on there, got a brush, and I throw some on there. I'm just gonna kind of put it in spots a little bit on there, gonna go kind of light with it. I got a bottle cap here with the uh, baking soda. We're just going to lightly put it over the sides of our car here. And what this is going to do is it's going to give us that, um, oh gosh, that textured cement. Look, I see you kind of get a little shot of it there. I'll go ahead and do the same deal here on this side of the car. And um, we're just going to put it on there kind of light in different spots and be kind of random with it. And then just take and kind of dump it on there. Now you got to be kind of careful because this baking soda tends to clump up a little bit. And when it'll clump, it'll kind of look kind of cheesy. So I normally try to take a Q-tip and kind of try to wipe it down a little bit, maybe wipe off where I got a little too heavy in some spots and stuff, and just kind of uh, work it in a little bit. But uh, it's just a cool little technique that'll add just that little bit extra to it and kind of make it look even more real. I like to try and get some kind of stick into the sides of the car too, if I can. So I get a little bit of that glue on there. That's also why I kind of tilt the car back and dump it down the sides of the car to let it kind of sit down. But uh, that's going to be about it for this one, guys. Other than that, we just got to clear coat one more time, which I'm not going to bore you with, and uh, go ahead and get her ready to run on the layout. So until next time, this is a uh, kind of how to do this. I'm not a professional by any means, but any of you out there that kind of want to dive in, that's how you do it. Thanks for watching.